dental mercury amalgam, because it's 48 to 54 percent mercury, is on a phase down approach. The African Amendment gives a date certain to ban. There is a 2021 for women and children, as the European Union has already done, and then there's a 2024 complete elimination for all parties of the conference. So this is really, really important. My colleague, Dr. Blanche Gruby and myself published a scientific paper to assist as a tool for this COP because no one really knows how pervasive dental mercury is inside the environment. It is in sewage sludge, burial, cremation, which is a huge product, pro uh, problem because Japan and India basically dispose of their human bodies by cremation. And all of the mercury that is inside the human body then goes up into the air and it's a local disposition of mercury or it's a global through the air. And this is a huge problem because nobody's looking at these other sources. So why do I say we have to support the African Amendment? Because we must. It is for our own preservation as well as for the people who will not be able to have this removed safely once it's in. So they will live with it and die with it. And this is why I'm here to say no to mercury and to support the African Amendment. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to have tonight uh, Anita. So how are you tonight? Hi, Nick. I'm great. How about yourself? Yeah, I'm fantastic. So uh, you are in Florida, so I'm in Switzerland. So we are- You're much later. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's okay, you know, for tonight, we have a lot of things to say. There is a lot of information and I'm very happy because um, people don't know that we met during this COP3. That is correct. We sure did. And boy, oh boy, you sure did work hard on that one. <laughs> yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, we was uh, with uh, the NGO uh, Say No to Mercury and you were also there with your work and uh, with your papers and it was fantastic to uh, help you guys, you know, doing this job. And that's why I think Today, um, I really wanted to um, have you on my first interview on this uh, YouTube channel because for me, it's a really first an honor. And after that, it's because there is a hell of knowledge and uh, a hell of actions that you made those, I don't know, 20 years, 25 years? <laughs> well, more than 20, let's put it that way. Okay. So, um, before starting that, uh, you know, uh, we are going to discuss about mercury intoxications, how to detox and all this stuff. But uh, for you personally, what happened? What was the link between mercury and your personal story? Well, um, I all of a sudden in my early 20s developed chronic adult asthma. But before I could figure out why I had asthma, I was a dance major in college. I moved to California and the first time I had dental insurance, mm -hmm. uh, I went to the dentist like so many other people. And the next thing I knew, I had one filling, mercury filling, they call them silver, but they're actually mercury. And the next thing I knew, I had a mouthful. The, the guy put in 12 at one time. Six months later, I started to have breathing problems. And... Um, it became very, very bad. And so by going to the doctor, they said, well, you have chronic adult asthma. And I said, from what? And they said, we don't know, but we'll give you medication. So I spent the next couple of decades looking for why do I have this? In the meantime, my health was getting worse and worse and worse. And finally, um, through a series of circumstances, like very good circumstances, I discovered through bioenergetic medicine, you know, biofeedback, that in fact, um, the practitioner said, well, you have mercury toxicity and very high levels. And the only place that you can have it is from your teeth. And I said, what? Uh, they're silver fillings. They're not mercury, like everybody else. You know, it's yeah, the yeah. same story. You One time you hear it and then you hear it 10 million times. And so yeah, exactly. uh, yeah. I said, oh my God, if it's me, it's everyone. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I literally, you know, I was working in California in the real estate market and um, I had a great job. And I said, 
I, I left. I left the industry to pursue telling what I found out to the world. And um, through a series of circumstances, this is what I've been doing for more than 20 years now. Yeah, yeah. And for, fortunately, um, I was able to start to read about the topic. And the first book that I read is a you know, it is the gold standard of people being introduced to the topic of mercury toxicity. And that's Dr. Hal Huggins' book, It's All in Your Head. So as soon as I got the book and I read it, I said, oh my God, it's me and it's everybody. And I was right. So there are mm -hmm. certain moments mm -hmm. in time where you're directed to do something and then you just, whether you want to do it or not, you just do it. And at the very beginning of this, I, I put together a lot of people and, um, we started a movement and it started yeah. out of California. Yeah, yeah. You sent me a, a kind of a paper huh, on asthma because uh, asthma, how many people have asthma? Kids? Yeah. A lot of people, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I, I remember when I was uh, doing my studies that uh, uh, because mercury will go also when uh, when there is a pregnant woman you know they go to the fetus you know so so a lot of people think that there is a direct uh, intoxications but uh kids and so that's why uh, the woman really needs to be uh, protected and uh, and we are, i think we are going to talk about that uh, uh, later but you sent me a, a paper uh and it's quite interesting that uh, uh we have um, uh, here on the screen. So can you talk a little bit about that? Well, this paper was recently published uh, by Mark and David Geyer, who are, they're just extraordinary researchers and doctors, and they have published many, many papers on mercury mm -hmm. and toxicity. And what happened was there's the research that they were able to called from the NHANES database, which is the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. It's mm -hmm. the largest database that um, has been tracking people in the United States since the 1960s. So it's really the gold standard of research when you're trying to figure out what's going on in a population. Well, um, I believe it was also very recently, between 2015 and 2016, another set of researchers actually were able to look at the NHANES database and they counted how many mercury fillings are in each person. So they said, okay, the average amount of mercury fillings per person is five and a little more than half of the population of 15 year olds and older have mercury in their teeth. And mm -hmm. this is shocking. Okay. So, um, in order to do their statistical analysis, they have, you know, they have all of the tools. And they concluded that, um, you know, the more fillings people have, their propensity for asthma goes up. And it's, they, they did too. And another one is a little bit later that we could talk about. But yeah. the research using this NHANES database, now that we actually know how many fillings are averaging throughout the U.S. population, they're going to be able to do every disease under the sun, including cancers. Mm -hmm. And they're going to, you know, there, there's papers that have been published, but not being able to use this very specific, not just any filling, it's mercury versus non-mercury fillings. So yeah, that's yeah. what they're able Yeah, okay, thank you for this explanation because uh, this is a very hot topic. And uh, uh, we are going to talk about many things because uh, uh, I know that you know a lot about uh, mercury in the dental industry. And um, it's it's very uh, also something that uh, you bring with you during uh, your interventions to the UN and other international organizations. Um, but um, if we can uh, talk about mercury intoxication, it's uh, not only in the dental industry. There is plenty of other sources of mercury intoxication. Yes, of course we have seafood, which. But here's the deal. In 1991, the World Health Organization deemed that the first round of human exposure to mercury is through dental amalgams and not through seafood. But it <laughs> seems to me, as, as more and more people start to understand just how long this story has been going on, because it's been going on almost 200 years now, this whole mercury story. Yes. And the backstory basically yeah. is, you know, there were dental craftsmen and dental surgeons, and the dental surgeons were also MDs. 
and um, the dental craftsmen were people that chewed horses or build, pro you know, build houses and were barbers. And so when this whole thing started, there was a debate whether to use mercury or not. And the dental surgeons, who were also doctors, they said, no, we will sign an oath of ethics not to use mercury. And the dental craftsmen were like, wait a minute, it's easy, it's cheap, we can use it, we can make a lot of money, and we can, you know, it doesn't require any technique. So the American Dental Association actually was founded on the use of dental mercury amalgam. And, and I call it, always say like mercury, 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 because they have been lying to the public, calling it silver yes. for the color, not the content. And normally yeah. when you have a product, the first product, um, it's in, in diminution of what the product is. If it's exactly. the first product exactly. has the most, you list it first, and then the second, third, and fourth. So it's really mercury, silver, tin, zinc, and copper. Yeah, we, we have, and, we have um, the, but they call it silver. And we have the same thing, you know, in Switzerland, in France. Uh, in, uh, we call it uh, plombage. So it's uh, like we say, it like uh, it was uh, with lead, you know. Le le yeah, le le and there yes. is there is any percentage of lead uh, on those uh, no amalgams. You know, it's fifty percent of mercury okay so you you just uh, I, i'm just amazed because you know when we were preparing this uh, interview we were uh, sharing some uh, informations and you give me some papers that we are going to show to the public because i think uh, tonight we have people that don't have a clue about mercury intoxications we will have some doctors we will have some uh, i hope a lot of uh, dentists uh, uh, that uh, so we can uh, share the information that they are not going to use any more mercury uh, uh, to the uh, on their practice. But uh, you send me a, an amazing paper, and how we can see that you know uh, it's amazing that um, we talk about mercury contamination from dental amalgam. So why we are not going to say okay stop it? You know why we need a cop two, a cop three to say that. Well, <laughs> in my opinion, this is one of the most important papers. I uh, worked on this paper with Dr. Blanche Ruby, and we published it in 2019 specifically for this COP because, you know, I've been going to the UN for 20 years. Since 2002 was my first time when it was called the Global Mercury Assessment. And then it became the International uh, Governmental Negotiating Committee, the INCS. You know, they have an acronym for everything. And then it became the, you know, the Minamata Convention on Mercury Treaty. And now it's the COPS, the Conference of the Parties. So it's a completely different language. But when I was very naive, way back in the day, <laughs> I thought, oh, we go to the UN and we had a large group of people. And um, we walk in there and we started talking about dentistry. And they looked like they wanted to, you know, clobber us because that wasn't on their agenda. In other words, you know, and this is a, a very difficult pill to swallow, but many of the people that you think would be in alignment and your ally are not. You know, my, my whole premise and my whole purpose has always been a global ban on mercury in the dental sector. I have never deviated from that. It is, you know, why I get up in the morning and when I saw the corruption very shortly after my first UN session, by the time they started with the INCs, the INCs, um, I was very much aware that all of these so-called NGOs were not going to be my ally. In fact, mm -hmm. they wanted me out because it's like anything else. You know, you, you create a, a, a situation where it's your livelihood and you prolong the problem so that you continue to get paid. And it's, it's, it's very, very sad, but it's very, very true. I recall meeting somebody, for example, this is a very big deal. One of the reasons, in my opinion, that they don't want to ban mercury in the dental sector, and it's still not banned, it's on a phased mm -hmm. on approach, which is a whole other story, is because mercury from the dental sector is diverted into the small scale gold mining sector. And what they do is they pan for gold like they did in the 1800s in you know, developed countries, but in developing countries like Brazil or Venezuela, Colombia, 
in Africa, in different regions, wherever there's small scale mining, they're still doing it the old way with a pan in the water and they pour the mercury in and the gold is attracted to the mercury and then they burn it off. So at one, one meeting at the UN in particular, I, I was talking to one of the fellows that was an NGO for the gold mining sector, protecting the gold miners. And I said, oh, why don't we partner up and you can help me to ban mercury in the dental sector. And that way you will solve the problem with the miners because there are alternatives. Yeah. And the guy looked at me and he, he turned around and walked away and I never spoke to him again. Okay, so that was, that was the big clue. And then when you see other people that, that run away from what you're doing and they, they, you can sense it. You can sense that they have a completely different motive of being there versus trying to do something good for humanity. And um, the WHO and the World Dental Association, it's FDI, but um, it's the same as the American Dental Association. It's the same tribe. And it's all about keeping people sick. It has nothing to do with health. And, and nobody can tell me otherwise because I spent the past 20 years listening to their rhetoric and their lies in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, people, people are going to say that you're in the conspiracy totally, but I think it's a fact, you know, I think uh, people need oh, to Oh, I understand. can prove it. The documents speak for themselves. Exactly, 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 you know, exactly. The but documents no speak. And, and yeah. fortunately for us, they also, they, they put their lies in print. So it's like, okay, people, really? I mean, the world, the American Dental Association is still saying mercury in the dental sector is safe. I mean, come on, really? Mm -hmm. So we can talk about the precautionary principle. You have 50 papers that say mercury is safe. You have 50 papers that say that mercury is not safe. Thousand of experts. <laughs> yeah, and, and so what are you going to do? Are you going to say, just because these guys say it's safe, we're going to continue to use it? Or are you going to first do no harm as a doctor and your oath of ethics and yeah. say, wait a minute, if these 50 guys are saying it's safe, but another 50 yes. say it's safe, yes. um, we better be on the side of, of caution and not use this material exact exact anita the, yeah it, it's it's very sad because i look at the research that still comes out believe it or not that says that there is no problem and um i'm just the messenger you know i'm mm -hmm. not doing this you know research i'm doing reviews of papers and i have read so many papers and um some of our colleagues have written brilliant papers absolutely tearing apart the lies of those that are saying that mercury in the dental sector is safe. It's be it's a beautiful thing. In fact, yeah, uh, Dr. Yeah. Ruby and I are working on one right now. And exactly. It's going to okay. blow people's minds because we put everything in the kitchen sink inside <laughs> perfect that's why that's why Annette, anita i wanted really to have you on my first uh, interview because you know the and i'm honored the, by the way thank you yeah, yeah I thank, really you, am. Th thank you thank you thank you it's it the thing is because um we are going to have you know boyd ali is going to have uh, also his time uh, with us uh, on jumping detox uh, uh, and uh we will have more knowledge about uh uh, the link between mercury intoxications and, uh, and, and pathologies, and uh, he's a great guy, and um, all all the people around this <laughs> subject know him. And we are going also to have other people, you know, uh, being interviewed. And um, but I, I just want to know exactly what was the first international conference. Um, you interrupt. <laughs> you, <laughs> Everywhere jumping, I you go, know, in a way that I have papers uh, uh, showing that it's dangerous because uh, I, I know that that is since many years, thirty years, forty years, people already talk talk about that. But you are the one with many others who really on the front of the battle. Yes. Well, I would say. You know, I started off in California because when I found out I was mercury poisoned and I'm like, okay, it's me and it's everybody, you know, it was the light went on and I'm, and, and after reading Hal's book, I'm like, okay, I, this has to be it. 
And so I met a few people, including Boyd and Dr. David Kennedy and, and um, exactly. mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. their uh, activist Freya Claus, Leo Cashman from Dental Amalgam Mercury Syndrome. Um, so many people, they all came together very quickly. And we really started this movement in California because we had a congresswoman who was just elected into Congress who had written a law in 19, I want to say 91 or 92, and we called it the Watson Law. Uh, Congresswoman Diane Watson. And she had written this law about the safety and efficacy of mercury dental amalgam, but it was never implemented. Okay, so you fast forward, let's say another eight years, and then she's in Congress, and um, we got behind her and, and really started to expose this. And even though we did things in California, we had resolutions, we had proclamations from, from cities, uh, the first one was in Costa Mesa. The second one was in Santa Ana, California. So we had all demographics as well. We were exploring this and sharing this information. And then we had the third one in Malibu. So the highest, you know, most expensive area in Southern California. And all of these mayors joined into this, you know, toxicity and understanding and said, you know, we want to do something for our city. But then the thing stopped. And so I said, you know, I, I'm going to try something else because I don't see any movement here. And that's when the INCs with the Minamata Convention, they, it started to come up. You know, they okay. started. Okay. The, it became more serious. I started in 2002 at, at the UN level, but then it, it, it took, to, I want to say the first ink was, yeah. I don't know, maybe 2009 or 10. C can, you explain went, a little, can you explain a little bit what is Minamata? And what was it? Oh, OK. Story, yeah? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah I went to the So I, I have firsthand experience. OK, OK. Um, the Minamata Convention on Mercury Treaty was named so because there, the first recognized mercury contaminated site was in Minamata, Japan, and it was caused by this plant called the Chiso Corporation. They were dumping mercury waste into the Minamata Bay. And what happened was at first the animals were starting to get sick and they, they said it was the crazy cat disease or something to that effect. In the 60s, the cat huh? even... Well, it's, it started before that. It was, they started contaminating the, the Minamata Bay in the 1930s. Whoa. Okay. And in the fifties, they, they discovered something was going on, mm -hmm. but it, I, I believe it was in like the mid 1950s, fifties, they realized it was this plant dumping mercury into the bay. And I'll tell you what, and, and this is something for your viewers to understand. Mercury is so pervasive. It is a generational thing. In other words, if your exactly. grandparents had mercury mm -hmm. in, your in their teeth and your parents didn't, you can still be mercury toxic as, as the grandchild. So we know this, and there are people today that are still being affected by Minamata. Exactly. So exactly. they dumped all the mercury in there. They know the cats started to, you know, convulse, and they would, they would, you know, jump Suicidal. in the water. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's it's pretty graphic um, when you actually see the old footage of this. And you see the deformities that were created from this. And then you see the Chiso Corporation fighting this mm -hmm. to not yeah. pay yeah. the yeah. victims. Yeah. You know, when we get down the road in this topic and we get to the UN level and we start talking about this African American, you know, in my mind, and I'm, I'm not afraid to say it, this is criminal. And any in the world that is using mercury today is poisoning their paper or patient. That's, that's the truth. There, you cannot mm -hmm. sidestep it. They are poisoning their patient and that patient will suffer whatever the consequences, however their, their body's biome is and they probably will never be able to have it removed safely, which is a whole other protocol of detoxification. Exactly, exactly. But I, I, think, I, think, I think this I think this is why 
uh, it's a very hot topic and hot topic for the government and all those uh, institutions because there's millions and millions of people having mercury in their mouth. Millions? If, to, if tomorrow, you know, on the... <clears throat> On the TV, you know, they just announced that, okay, we have to say that mercury feelings are not good for your health. All those people are going to rush to their dentist. Sorry. <coughs> I need to take some mercury out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but the thing is that the amount of people rushing to their proper dentist, you know, family doctors, you know, those right. type of uh, expert doctors and dentists, they don't have to make some safe deposits, you know. So that's why it could be a very problematic. And I know that you and others are really also trying to educate uh, dentists to this uh, safe yeah. um, removal um, solutions. Yeah, but, but there are solutions. And this is the whole <clears throat> point. You know, more than 30 years ago, and I know this, this, this is, we're doing like a, a, a snake, we're moving around the topic, but it always, you know, it comes back to dentistry and whole body health. And um, the big one is mercury. It really, really is. Because if you figure half of the U.S. population of 330 million plus people have it in their mouth, you know, countries like the, the European Union, you look at that as a whole body, um, it, it's it's millions and millions and billions of people. Also kids. Have, you know, hmm? Also I'm kids. Sorry? Also kids. Also kids. Yeah, if you're looking at 15 and up, there there is another paper that just came out, but I didn't want to share it now because I have to review it first. But uh, yeah, the exactly. truth will come up on all of this. And um, you know, one of the big factors that we always thought about was that the amount of litigation that would happen in the U.S if mercury in dental fillings was deemed toxic, even though it is, and even though, uh, you know, many researchers have said, yes, it's very toxic. Oh, uh, so you just put up this paper, okay. Dental amalgam restorations in a nationally representative sample of US population um, over the age of 15, the NA. So this is, this is the paper that counted the number of fillings inside the u.s population this was the first one and uh we absolutely know that if it's 15 years and older you know the kids under the age of 15 also have it so this whole cover-up i mean I, I you know people call me a conspiracy theorist not at all i i can show you the documents it, it's all there it's just how do you find the research how do you present the research and um, how do you get governments to say, okay, we don't want to have our constituents or our, our, our communities poisoned anymore. And this is a really, really important paper because it launched the ability for other researchers to take that data and, and explore any disease that they can possibly think of. And there's many. Um, for example, Alzheimer's disease, and I know you have a paper on that. That's another one of our colleagues. Um, it is definitively a fact that mercury in dental fillings causes Alzheimer's disease. Okay. And um, your, your upcoming guest, Dr. Boyd Haley, mm -hmm. is Hold the on. guy that made the association between Alzheimer's disease and mercury dental fillings. And, you know, Many of these people don't get their due, you know. Um, yes. In other words, they're not recognized for as the source. And I'm going to jump back a little bit just so that you know the the real source of how this Let's whole country started. Yeah. I, I hate to go backwards, but you got to go backwards to go forwards sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Let's so, go. I'm going to tell you. There's a gentleman, he's, I, I want to say he's 89 years old now. His name is Dr. Olympio Faisal Pinto, okay? Olympio was the son of two dentists. His mother and father were both dentists and graduated in Brazil in the 1920s, which was very uncommon for a woman to be, even be a dentist. And they lived in a mining sector of Brazil, 
And his father was the only dentist. So he was around mercury and he was around gold. And so the patients would come to him and, and he hated the mercury because he thought aesthetically it was horrible. And he was like a jeweler. So mm -hmm. he would take out the mercury and put in the gold. And he noticed that when he changed the filling material, his patients would recover. Okay. So he had a little girl who had leukemia. She had a mouthful of mercury. He came, the, the parents brought uh, the girl to his house and the, the father did the dental work and took out the mercury and the girl recovered. And they said he's a charlatan. They called him, you know, witch doctor and so on. Mm -hmm. And so he said, okay, I'm going to put the mercury back in and, and see, you know, if it's okay, if that's really what it was. Really? And the girl developed uh, um, leukemia again. Yes. Wow. So the dad took the, the parents came back and said, she's been dying. You know, she still has leukemia. Do whatever you have to do. Save our daughter. He took the mercury out, put the gold back in and, and the daughter was fine. So that put Olympio Jr. on a path of um, exploration, let's say. And in the 1950s, they, he got a scholarship to go to Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. to study for his master thesis, okay? So he came to the United States and his dad said, listen, I don't know why when I take out these mercury fillings, that the patient gets better, but see what you could research. And so Olympio Jr. went to the Georgetown University. It's not really Jr., but they have the same name, you know, Olympio, Olympio. Anyway, um, he went to Georgetown and he said, I want to do my master thesis on mercury and the American disease. And the dean of the school said, if you do that, we will have to close down 40 dental schools. Go and study um, facial, uh, he went into um, mouth reconstruction. Uh, oral rehabilitation. So he never was able to present his master thesis of what he wanted. Fast forward, we're now in the uh, 1970s. Early 1970s, he goes to Mexico City for a dental conference. He's still living in Brazil and he meets Dr. Hal Huggins. Now Hal Huggins was a pioneer in his own right, but he was still using mercury. His thing at the time was studying blood chemistries. And Hal did a presentation and he said, well, you know, I have patients and, you know, I balance their blood chemistry and some of them get better and some of them don't. Well, and Olympia went up to him and said, listen, try this. And he said, oh, my goodness, mercury is inert. Mercury is stable. Mercury doesn't come off the fillings, blah, 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 blah. The same song and dance that we still hear today. Exactly. And so he, Olympia told Hal, listen take your sickest patient and take the mercury out and see how they do. Mm -hmm. Hal does it, calls Olympio. Oh my God, I'm getting rid of all of my mercury. Tell me more. So he had the, the you know, I, I know great people in this movement. Some of them are here, some of them are not. But Hal Huggins was a fierce warrior. He was a beast. He had a dry sense of humor. And, you know, I when I first read his book, he told me, go to Brazil and meet Olympio, my my twin brother from another mother. You know, he, he would call him his brother from the south. And, and I'm telling you, Hal never looked back and he became what is really the foundation for what is really true biological dentistry. And I, I hate to say it, but being mercury free is just a little piece. The beginning. Yeah. It's yeah. the very beginning. It's it's the ultimate beginning, but it's still mm -hmm. the beginning. So um Hal started to look at blood chemistries and he was doing his, you know, everything, taking up mercury. Then he discovered the root canals for Western Price and on and on and on it went. And he developed this thing called the Huggins Protocol. Mm -hmm. Fast forward a little bit more. Yeah. And um, Dr. Blanche Ruby, who I know she's going to be on your, your show, she meets Hal, same circumstance, and but she's a dentist. And he winds up mentoring her. 
and she never looked back. And when he passed away, he gave everything to her to continue on his legacy and his work. And and fortunately, I'm I'm blessed to be working for her because like Hal and like Olympio and all of these people that were persecuted, um, there's they they do it till the end, you know, and I'm I'm in it till the end. So yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that is yeah. the backstory. So if anybody wants to tell you somebody else, it was Olympio Pinto and Hal Huggins, the end. There's <laughs> nothing in between. There were a few guys, but you know, nobody did what these two did. And if it wasn't for them, God only knows when we would have found out that there was even mercury in the dental fillings. And okay. and they all suffered, trust me. They all yeah. the early guys in this too. They're still suffering. People still suffer from being a biological dentist. Yeah. You know, it's not yeah. easy. It's not easy to be I know. on the outside uh, of something, you know, mm -hmm. especially when other people's money depend on it. All right. All right. Okay. So let's go back to uh, the COP now. Um, I think it was in March that there was uh, the COP4 because on the COVID period. So it was quite delayed, but um, some things happen now. But uh, what are the updates that you can bring to the uh, audience uh, tonight? Okay, well, uh, okay, Nick, as you know, in 2019, the African group, which, by the way, represents the largest group within the Minamata framework. First, there's the African group, which is 54 countries. And then there is mm -hmm. the GRULAC group, which is the group of Latin American and Caribbean countries. They're the second largest with 33 countries. And um, the African group, they wanted to get a date certain to phase out, not phase down, but phase out dental mercury amalgam. And sadly, this is the first cop that I missed because I said, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go due to the, you know, it, it, too many restrictions. In other words, yeah, yeah. I... I Put myself me too, me too, me too. <laughs> yeah too many too many too yeah, many for yeah, me yeah. but sadly it was the first one that i missed in you know 10 wow. years a long time uh, but in this uh request here that that you have up on the screen the fdi is the world dental association for lack of a better explanation and they are ridiculing they're saying that um the african group failed to get a ban and um this is so shameful and i'm waiting to get more from from people that were actually there exactly what happened but reading this document shows me just how bad the corruption really is um for many many years they, they said that the 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 platform inside the framework rejected the African group's proposal. And instead they said, okay, well, we'll let women and children, if the dentist seems that it's okay, don't use mercury unless the dentist deems it, it you have to. I mean, this is, this is insanity. This is like nothing. It's like a watered down version of nothing. And when you are, are doing these types of treaties, if you do not have a date certain, it, in my opinion, it's, it's worthless. In other words, they banned blood pressure cuffs, they banned thermometers, uh, they banned many, many products and processes that contain mercury. Dental mercury amalgam is the, the fifth largest use of mercury in the world, okay? It's, it's astounding. It's astounding. And so, um, sorry, I, I couldn't hear yeah, you, Nick. Exact. No, no, it's, I was just thinking that it was just amazing yeah yes yes and yet that flow that we discussed earlier about it going into the mining sector exactly. okay we're not talking about a little bit of mercury we're talking about 340 tons annually which is the mm -hmm. un number why why, can... why why gold mining because people need to understand why they use mercury for gold mining in the small scale mining these people are poor they 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 pan for gold and they get the, the gold and they burn the mercury off of the gold and then they sell the gold. Yeah, because it's, there is an attraction. People need to understand that there is attraction between mercury yes, and gold. Yes, attraction uh -huh. between the mercury and the gold, yes. Yeah, it's that's why people, like people that people have gold in their mouth 
they have mm, exponential um, mercury intoxications huh? okay so yeah like there is all yep. other yep. topic but we're going to talk that later with uh, with people but uh, it's very important that sometimes people understand that uh, yeah gold mining it's uh, linked to mercury uh, pollution oh it's hugely linked what about here's the things that i brought to the table and, and everybody they hate <laughs> let's go before. let's go let's do it they hated me i'm telling you they hated me so bad and I'll never forget because there's certain moments when I'm I'm telling the truth that that you can feel the the anger in the room, and one of them <laughs> happened to be with using an alternative to mercury, which is the borax method, which uh -huh. is in our paper uh -huh. that you had up on the screen. That paper, it covered all of the problems and then it gave the solutions. Okay, so we're not just about giving you the problem with nothing. We're we're giving you the problem and then saying. Okay, here's how you can fix it. Mm -hmm. So, um, when I started to discuss the borax method for small scale gold mining, it's cheaper, you attract more gold, and then you have to ask yourself so, why aren't the people that are supposed to be protecting these small scale gold miners not making the, the people on top who are buying this gold invest in the, in the uh, borax and the materials needed? to do mining in a more sustainable way because all of this crap about sustainability, I mean, it's, it's, it's crap because there's nothing sustainable about the way they're approaching this when mm -hmm. it's, it's everybody wins, but they're not doing it. So you tell me, you know what I mean? How can they say in 2022 that the African countries the FDA, the World Dental Association was so happy because they said, well, we don't have the solution for products or materials alternative to mercury. The, you know, that is the biggest lie that I ever heard. And I can't believe that they're still repeating this lie in 2022. When I, I think I may have mentioned it earlier, there was um, a pilot project in Tanzania done in the 1980s. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it was done in conjunction with the World Health Organization to develop this safe and effective treatment for people that were living in remote areas with no electricity, no water, no nothing. And it's called a traumatic restorative treatment or art. So it's basically you put a little paste in your hand and you use hand tools. You clean out the, the surface of the cavity and you pop this paste in. Boom, you're done. Interesting. Okay? Interesting. It's, it, it, you do not destroy the good tooth surface. These mm -hmm. are the things that they don't tell you about amalgam. When you're placing mercury fillings, you have to drill out the good tooth structure, which weakens the teeth. The, the mercury expands and contracts, it cracks the teeth. So eventually, after you have your mercury filling, then you're going to need a root canal because the tooth broke. And then mm -hmm. you're on mm -hmm. the dental treadmill till you're in the box. And I have been saying this for a very long time. The dentist makes you sick. You're on the medical treadmill till you're in the box. But guess what? We can prove this now. Mm -hmm. We can mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. prove it. And I'm telling you, people are going to be horrified when they find out that they have spent tons of money going to dentists and these dentists are making them sick and poisoning them with treatments that are so dangerous, using materials that are so toxic that you mix up all this toxic stuff together. It's a toxic soup. It's, it's horrific. Yeah, and it, yeah, again, yeah. when I, I, I'm just the messenger and I can, people will call me up and say, Hey, Anita, do you have a paper? Is there a relationship between let's say mercury and Alzheimer's disease and I'll send them a stack, you know, um, why we have to start asking big questions. Why are dentists still using things that poison people like mercury? That's the first big one, you know? Okay. okay. Um, and people in the United States will say, oh, but they don't do that anymore. Well, really? So how come half of the U.S. population, let's say 150,000 of what they're saying, um, have mercury in their teeth? According to the in the United States. Which country are not uh, using any more mercury? I think it's oh, Jap uh, Japan. Japan's more yeah, than well, 30 years. Uh, they call them the first worlds of the first worlds, which started this whole thing, which was Norway, Denmark, and Sweden. The Nordic wow. Council. These guys, they're always ahead of the game. 
And curiously, I just got a paper from um, the Norwegian government did a study, okay? Mm -hmm. And the study was, how do we know, people come into to a doctor's office and they have, you know, all these ailments that are undefinable, nobody knows the reason why. But they, the, the patient will suspect maybe it's my feelings, okay? So they did this study and they had uh, people, I think from the age of 20 to 70, and they looked at, they, they took the mercury out. They, they listed all the symptoms that the person had mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they were doing mm -hmm. a cost analysis of over time, um, was this beneficial to their population? And of course, at the beginning, they said that the, the differential, it costs more to remove the mercury and replace it with, you know, a biocompatible material composite, so on. But if you look at the five to 10 year lifeline of the patient, mm -hmm. they're saving a lot of money because the patient is not sick. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yeah, it's a big deal. This paper just, it's hot off the press. I didn't give it to you, I just got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I wanted also for, for, for the people that, uh, uh, I, I have, you know, the video that I made uh, when you had this intervention uh, during the COP3 in Geneva 2019. And uh, after that, uh, we are going to see that uh, now, just now. But just before to see, uh, I need to make something, you know, it's uh, people need uh, also, uh, if it's possible, you know, to subscribe and to share and to leave some comments and to like. Uh, on YouTube because uh, this could help. But uh, now we are going to uh, see Anita um, just just saying a few words. ...government for hosting COP3. I am representing the NGO Save No to Mercury. We support the African group to amend Annex A to the Minamata Convention by moving dental amalgam from Part 2 to Part 1 of Annex A with the intent to follow the EU's ban on mercury implemented in children under 15 breastfeeding of pregnant women by 2021 and for the global population by 2024. Developing countries, countries in, in transition are moving towards a ban, such as Indonesia and Nepal, who have banned the use of dental mercury, and Guyana, who is on a trajectory for a ban, and as just mentioned, Madagascar. While the industry has continued to promote its use and as a directive by the Convention for Early Implementation, and in the spirit of the treaty, we hope that all the delegations support the African group as well. Thank you very much, Mr. President. The, the end result is basically um, supporting in 2019, so that's 20, 21, 23 years ago, mm -hmm. and we're still discussing the same song. The African group went again saying we need a ban date and still nothing. So, um, I truly believe they're trying to push this to 2030, which means another eight years of poisoning people for nothing. And, and the FDI's reasoning and the, the World Dental Association is basically saying, hey, um, we don't know how to have safe storage management of the mercury waste. And- uh, This is another topic, know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like, it's, it's, it's a lie though. Okay, so if you have eight more years of 340 tons, how much is that as compared to stopping it, use resin, use the things that we already know work, use what the World Health developed and supported that has so much science behind it on this atraumatic restorative treatment. I've, I've, I've written papers on it. And, and we're not talking about a little bit of science and success. We're talking about a lot. We're talking about it's great for people that are old who are afraid to go to the dentist. It's least really less invasive. Um, the, success, the success rate of using art is, is superior to mercury. So, you know, I figured this out and I'm nobody. I'm just a person looking at stuff saying, wait a minute, there's got to be a better way than poisoning people with mercury, the most toxic non-radioactive material known to man. I mean, I, I, it's, it's mind boggling. And um, mm -hmm. my goal is to keep beating this drum and we will end the use of mercury and we're in the dental sector. You know, there's going to be other places that it's still going to be in use, but it is the only item in the treaty that is on a phase 
down approach. It is the only item in the treaty really? that goes inside the human body. Wow. So, you know, I asked the viewers, what do you think about that? I mean, this, mm. this is the biggest crime against humanity that I have ever witnessed and have been a part of for over 20 yeah. years now. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. That, not. That, that's why, you know, when I was, I, I started study, uh, my studies, you know, in Geneva 12 years ago, and I was, uh, I was uh, happy to have Boyd Ali as, a, as my professor, you know, and after that, we are now still good friends, you know, and it's, an, it's when I heard about this Mercury, you know, I, I didn't have a clue about what's going on on that, you know, and I, I was starting making some research and after that I understand the, the link between mercury and health, you know, and all those uh, problematic uh, in the dental uh, with the safe deposit, etc. And uh, it's amazing that uh, uh, the, the bad guy is close to, to the people. It's in the mouth, you know, it's in the food and, uh, and people don't understand that in heavy metal, uh, one of the worst is mercury, you know, okay, there is others. Uh, but the body can, can a little bit manage the others. But mercury, it's very complicated because it's uh, it's going to strike uh, every organs, every uh, metabolic systems, uh, uh, um, the the brain. Uh, there is a lot of uh, hard stuff, you know, behind that. And uh, so, yeah, it's uh, I was really amazed uh, to see that uh, this topic it's uh, really linked to to to. To, to making people sick and and on the other side that uh, okay uh, what are the good news uh, anita is there some good news well um <laughs> you're doing this show so that's good news because people you know they they learn through through this type of platform um most people don't have time to read a lot anymore but um you know, what you're doing is, is an invaluable thing because people need to know and they still don't know. And, and it's, it's quite obvious to me if, if half of the U.S. population today, I mean, we're talking, this was published a couple of years ago. So this is as recent as you're going to get that half of the people have mercury in their teeth over the age of 15. But we know it's younger as well. And um, we change. My, huh? We change five years old, three years old. Come on. Yes. It is so heartbreaking. And I mean, I just, I, I just got this paper last week and I haven't gone through all of the numbers and at what age they're, they're saying, okay, the mercury loads in the kidneys or, you know, urine's, it's, it's astronomical at what age, but I can tell you this, the sensitivity of, of children is always going to be a, a much more dynamic problem because they're small. You know, you put five mercury fillings in a little kid, um, their bodies are so small, so they're going to become toxic much faster. And, you know, Nick, I, I know everything is about money, okay? I, I think everybody should make a great living. I think if you study to medicine and you become a doctor or a dentist, um, you, should make, you should be able to support your, your expertise, but not at the expense of poisoning your patients. And this is where there is a huge, huge, huge disconnect because I got news for you, these dentists, and it's not just a few dentists, it's many of these dentists are using materials that are so toxic and they're not at all looking at the toxicology of any of this stuff, let alone Let's say you have a titanium implant and then you next to it, you have a mercury filling. And then next to that, you mm -hmm. have a nickel. You metal know, you know that? Yeah, metal, yeah. metal allergies, metal allergies, you know, all those allergies that we are putting <laughs> on the feet, metal you know, on the body, you. on the legs, you know. And if those people have titanium, you know, um, uh, in have amalgams, mercury amalgams, you know, they develop more allergies, you know, on this metal. And sometimes they don't have, they don't make the, the link. I, I will have uh, on my show uh, uh, um, a famous uh, uh, surgeon, I will tell you, uh, a surgeon in, in the United States uh, who, uh, who he just save people, you know, he just 
okay, make some, uh, you know, the Melissa test to see if there is a, a mercury intoxications. And uh, after that, it take all those uh, titanium stuff out of the body and, and replace it. Um, uh, and the people are just getting better and better. Right. Well, here's the thing, you know, and this is what I tell people daily. <laughs> your health starts in your mouth. And again, Hal Huggins said this 50 years ago. Weston Price said it 100 years ago. And now we can prove it. Now we can prove it. Oh, hey, hey. Look at you. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm not Dr. Blanche, and I just published our first book too on this. But don't exactly, yep. exactly. And it's so it's so great. You know, I'm very happy that you just jump in uh, with her to 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 write this book. So just tell me a, a little bit about that and uh, how. Oh, thank how you, this, thank you. Start, yeah. Tell me, tell me. Well, uh, Blanche and I both are of Puerto Rican heritage. But we didn't know it until we met, um, I think it was 2012. And she was opening up a clinic with a colleague in California. And she called me up because we had spoken over the phone before. And she said, hey, do you, do you want to come up to the open house in our dental clinic? I said, of course, but I'm going to have to stay over because in California, the traffic is so horrendous. And I was living much further south than where her new clinic was. And um, I went. And she asked me at the, uh, after the event, she called me up and she said, hey, listen, I really want to write a book about everything that I've worked with Hal on and my, you know, 40 years or 30 years at the time uh, about dentistry. And would you be interested? And I, I said I needed to think about it for a minute because, you know, I was involved heavily in the UN stuff and doing other things with other NGOs. And uh, I told her, you know what, I want to do this with you. So uh, that became the beginning of a beautiful relationship working and, you know, we're publishing papers and, you know, scientific papers and we just got the book out and it's a very easy read, but th thank you. We, we put case studies, Blanche's case studies in it. Wow. Because, cool. uh, awesome. Many case studies. Here's the thing. When you hear a story, you're much more likely to remember the story than you are to just read blah, 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 right? Right. So she had many, many cases over the years since Hal taught her about the biological dentistry and what it means. And I mean, she's taken it to another level. And so um, we have cases in, in her book that uh, are pretty outstanding and pretty dramatic too. And I'm sure when she's on, she'll tell you about some of them. But one in particular uh, was, was a young guy, had a brain tumor, uh, was getting ready to have his first child. And um, he had, you know, a, what we call a full dental revision, which is if he has mercury, it's taken out. If he has root canals, it's taken out. If you have cavitations, which is extracted teeth that have never been properly cleaned, um, she does all of that. OK, mm -hmm. so the guy that had this brain tumor, all of a sudden he was a, he was a chef and he was opening up his restaurant. And what winds up happening after his full dental revision tumor gone, has a kid. Now he's opened up his restaurant. Everything's great. So when people don't see the link between the teeth, I mean, we're talking all kinds of cancers, all kinds of cancers. And um, it's such a disservice to everybody because the doctor and the dentist don't communicate, okay? The exact, dentist... Exact, it, it, exact. This is yeah. the biggest problem uh, in the whole I have dentist whole friends world. and they never talk with the, with the other the, the doctors, yeah, exact, yeah. The dentist, you know, and Hal used to say this too, he said, the dentist is the front line. The dentist is the guy that can manage your health. Mm -hmm. uh, if they were doing their job, if they, if they even knew what they're doing, but they don't know what they're doing. They yeah. don't know. They're, they're mm -hmm. doing, you know, they're, they call them, you know, Olympia used to say this, they're, they're, you know, tooth mechanics. They, they do the mechanical work and um, they're not looking at all at the toxicity. And then you, you're diagnosed with some kind of crazy illness 
And it's actually something that came from your mouth. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, the biggest disconnect is between doctors and dentists. And, you know, thinking about it while talking to you, I wonder if that, too, was not by design. Because back in the day, a doctor had the choice to become a dentist. In other words, they were a doctor first, and then they would have a specialty in dentistry. And maybe, maybe this system which wouldn't surprise me one bit, knowing what I know about the subject. Um, mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. set up this way. So the dentist does make you sick. You're on the medical treadmill till you're in the box. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, 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 um, it's amazing uh, what you say. And uh, I, want, I want also to, um, to share um, things. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back. Um, Okay, so there is a, um, a link you send me, like a bio, bio, bio comp lab. Biocomp laboratories, yeah, yes. Yeah, oh, there's, yeah. a, there's a couple of things. Um, before Hal Huggins passed away, he put Blanche, she passed the baton to Blanche because he, he knew that she would be the one to move on and, and you know maintain everything that he had started mm -hmm. and keep pushing. Uh, biological dentistry forward. Biocomp laboratories test dental materials to see what material is the re least reactive for the patient. Um, you know, we do get people that, that test from other countries and it's so important because once you have the materials taken out of your mouth that you know are bad, for example, mercury or titanium or, yes. you know, Crowns, you need to know what is the least reactive material to replace it with for you because all dental materials are not the same first and all dental materials are not the same for everybody mm -hmm. so it is mm -hmm. there is no one size fits all there's there's a couple other tests from her other lab that Hal started which which was um dna connections and if if the listeners on this show if they take away anything, one of the most important tests that you could do for yourself is this test called the APOE test, which is on the other her other laboratory. I think I sent you the link, DNA Connections. Yes. This APOE test will tell your, you your propensity to develop Alzheimer's disease. And mm -hmm. according to the research about 25% of every person on the planet has this genetic predisposition. So what does that mean? It means if you have mercury in your teeth and you have this genetic predisposition mm -hmm. to develop wow. Alzheimer's disease, you can be proactive, get the mercury removed safely and start to detox. In other words, it's an early detection opportunity for the patient to say, Okay, I'm going to I'm an APOE4. I'm going to stay away from fish and I'm going to get the mercury out of my teeth. Because fish after dental amalgam, it's the highest rate of um, mercury that you'll be exposed to uh, in the in the environment. It's less unless you live near a crematorium. Um, but basically it it is a critical test. It the is crematorium. a crematorium. The crematorium, it's a uh... Yeah, you know, it's more and more people, you know, they don't want to have a grave. <laughs> yeah, that is correct. And it's a bigger problem, too. It's in our paper. It's it's a much bigger problem. And here's the crazy thing. In the United States, you really don't know where they are. They're kind of hidden. They're very uh, crematoriums. And I think, uh, like in England, um, they they mandated that every uh, crematorium have has this thing called a mercury scrubber attached to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could tell you stories about the UN and the corruption of, of it, these treaties. We have time. <laughs> we have time. <laughs> one thing that I learned in, in the first trip in 2002 was one, all fish, now mind you, 2002, all fish around the world are contaminated with some sort of mercury. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's a river, lake, stream, ocean, does not matter. Oh, because mercury okay. bioaccumulates. Even, okay, yeah. yeah. There, in other words, when they say it's wild caught, it doesn't matter. It still has mercury in it. Yeah. Everything yeah. that comes out of the water has a level of mercury. 
And huge, huge, huge. Salmon, huge, tuna, you know, with all those. Yeah, tuna is, tuna is the worst. Tuna yeah. is the worst. And it's the most consumed. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> in the United please, States. Please, yeah. please. Yeah, it's, it's, it's because I, it, I have to drink water. <laughs> yeah, it's because I talk too much. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think that the information, you know, it's invaluable because I tell people the life you save may be your own, which is really true. Let's say you have a mouthful of metal and you're starting to get older and all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, I don't feel so good. And then you yeah. go to the doctor. He's like, well, you have this, 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 this. we'll give you a pile of drugs and off yeah. you go. And then you say, hey, well, wait, 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 wait. What, yeah. what caused this? Oh, we don't know. Exactly. But this exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, Anita, you know, when, uh, when, uh, and, uh, because I'm, I'm a therapist, you know, uh, I'm a nutritionist and uh, in detox. And when I, I'm talking with my patients and uh, with my consultations, you know, I made a, a very good anamnesis, you know, it's uh, so I'm asking a lot of questions. And um, when, when I came to the point about, um, OK, can you open your mouth? You have some mercury feelings, you know, so, so you know, so sometimes I just don't know that they have some mercury most of the time. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and most of the time, they don't know that they could have some link between uh, health and, uh, and mercury. And uh, also, uh, it's quite funny because funny, it's not a good word, but uh, it's uh, I'm always amazed that when um, I just ask them, uh, when was their last uh, amalgam deposit, you know, in a savage way, not in a safe way. You know, <laughs> right, right, right. Way. Uh, because most of the time it's not done uh, in a safe uh, uh, technique. No. Uh, and uh, and uh, when they say, okay, it was, uh, I don't know, in uh, 2019, uh, they just jump like that and say, oh, but uh, I, I start to be ill at the same period. Isn't that astounding? And a lot of times this happened to me. You know, and I just say, okay, so now you have answer about what happened to you. So take your luggage and just put it down and say, okay, I, I'm a mercury intoxicated person. Yep. And that's not, that, that's not the journey, but it's a long journey. So we need to help them with all those techniques, with all those information. And, uh, and thank you a lot. Yep. Uh, and, uh, Absolutely. And, and voids compound, you know, where this is, this is one of the critical key pieces. Like, you know, you, you give people the problem, but you have to have the solution and there, the solutions exist, yeah. you know, yeah. the solution have... absolutely exists. They have existed for a long time now, yeah. but the most important thing is, and this is something that Olympio Pinto said, we had a congressional hearing in Brazil because I've done a lot of work in Brazil with, with Dr. Blanche and, and Boyd and, and David Kennedy, the whole gang. We, we went to Brazil and, and the reason why we wanted to do Brazil, well, it, uh, I started it, uh, but I had a reason. One, because Olympio Pinto is really the, the forefather of the mercury free knowledge and movement. He's okay. it, you know, yeah. Brazil has more dental schools and graduates more dentists than the European Union and the United States combined. Come on. It is a gigantic yeah. industry. Yes, that is absolutely that is a fun fact for your viewers. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Yeah. It is a huge industry there. Huge, huge, huge. Um, the, the mining that goes on in Brazil illegally is tremendous. And they're still using mercury. So um, I had a multitude of reasons why we did many projects there. And uh, uh, the, the big reason, too, as Olympia's daughter is the third generation mercury-free dentist, and she... Uh, Dr. Martha Faisal Pinto, she helped to organize all of these things. So we did a lot of work in Brazil, but unfortunately, they're still using it. But hopefully this is all going to change in the very, very near future. Okay. I always okay. said if Brazil goes mercury free, the game is over. But we have, you know, we're, we're, we're working on some things to add this long before the 2030 request by the European Union, or I don't even know who's requesting it. It isn't even the European Union because they had banned it for kids under 15 and pregnant women and women of childbearing age in 2017. It's the industry. 
that's holding on to we have to continue to use mercury, which is the World Dental Association and the American Dental Association. And here's something else. <laughs> I know too much about this crazy topic. Um, two of the manufacturers of mercury dental amalgam in the United States and globally, uh, Dent Supply Serona has banned it. They are no longer selling it. And Kerr, mm -hmm. uh, uh, K-E-R-R, -R, was selling dental mercury and they no longer are selling it. So the top manufacturer got out. So, you know, in the United States, we're a very litigious country. And so in my mind, they just wanted this to quietly go away and say, oh, the manufacturers don't sell it anymore. So we have to just use something else. You follow? Yes. Instead of coming out and give a straight out ban because people say they're banning it. Oh, my God. Why are they banning? Is it a problem? And the, and the answer, obviously, <laughs> yes. And then. You're like, okay, where's my attorney? <laughs> you know, <laughs> exactly. and, uh, then then that's a whole different story. But um, yeah. you wow. know, today they still use it. Um, one of the big countries that did ban it was Indonesia. It's I think the fourth largest populated country in the world, and they 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 banned it. So yeah. how could Indonesia ban it, and Canada and the United States and Australia not be able to ban it, or New Zealand? Yeah. You yeah. know, people have to ask the hard questions if. If a, de a developing country is, is with a, with a the, one of the poorest countries, with one of the biggest populations, can ban it, how come we can't? Yeah, these okay. are questions, you know. Yeah. Okay, okay. So be before perhaps, uh, I think we we are going to to end the show. But I have a question. It's uh, what you. is your update? Uh, is there something that you are going to 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 do or are going to to write uh, if there is something. Yep and yep. <laughs> I'm always doing something. I'm causing trouble. I'm, I'm waking people up. That's my job. You okay, know, great. I, I hopefully yeah. hopefully so we'll, we will have some good news soon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you a lot, Anita. So uh, just stay with us uh, because I'm going also to show uh the next um uh, interview that is coming next week and uh i would love that you can tell a little bit about this beautiful woman too so just wait uh, here so so next week we are going to have uh, dr lisa matrice she's a lobbyist and dentist and uh she's the founder of uh, ngo uh, say no to mercury so what is say no to mercury Say No to Mercury uh, was the brainchild of Dr. Lisa. And she started this in Australia because, again, Australia has mining going on there, too. And she's been a biological dentist for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to have the autonomy to have her own NGO status within the UN frameworks, framework so nobody could really drive her to do what they want her to do. In other words, she's she says what she wants to say. And um, I joined with her because she gave me that same opportunity. You know, I, I'm not one that likes to be censored, as you can tell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I like to tell the truth, whatever that truth may be, or at least what I believe the truth to be. And again, I, I, um, I was so grateful. So I've been working with Dr. Lisa now for several years and um, Okay. You know, again, she she didn't go to this last cop either because of the 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 policy around it, and um, but we're still we're still doing it. We're still doing it. Okay. And she's probably the top biological dentist for sure in Australia, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, I think it would be very interesting, and uh, she's uh, she's not too far now. Uh, yes, in, I know she's having fun. Yeah, <laughs> Somebody exactly. can... So, so I haven't on, been sure if I haven't left the country in, in since 2019. It's it's wild. Yeah, it's, <laughs> first it's time in yeah. life. You know, it's three years almost. Yeah, exactly. So uh, there is also a very good surprise in June uh, on Jumping Detox uh, uh, YouTube channel. So it will it will uh, we will have uh, the king, the king 
Dr. Boyd Alley. So um, I'm very happy that uh, you give me the honor to to jump in <laughs> on my on You're my right. on YouTube, YouTube channel. You know, it's a it's a, it's an amazing man, and uh, we will have also uh, Dr. Natalie Kalam. She's an amazing doctor in Switzerland. Also, Dr. Uh, Christophe Gachet, uh, a dentist, an amazing dentist, uh, the owner of Ron Dental Clinic, you know, and uh, he's quite of the only guy uh, in Switzerland to make very, very, very good safe deposit removal, you know. So it's, uh, yeah, we will have a lot of information for, for the people who are looking um, uh, clinic, dental clinics to do this because like, uh, like you said, uh, Anita, it's the first step, but uh, after that, there is uh, also all the things to clean the roots yeah. and all those techniques and and and, uh, and products. And we will also have uh, uh, Dr. Sarah Dogna uh, uh, Cruzia uh, from France, and uh, she was also uh, my professor uh, when I was studying in, uh, in Geneva, mm -hmm. and she's uh, she, she's an amazing uh, doctor, uh, and she can explain also a lot of uh, things concerning the toxicology of heavy metals, aluminium, lead, and all those stuff. So yeah, it's uh, I'm very very happy to have them uh, on my show. So um, what I can say for this uh, first interview, I know that there is a lot of things to to <laughs> add, and uh, I, I'm quite sure that we will have uh, we will meet again. Uh, we will make another interview with you, uh, perhaps in September or in October, to perhaps uh, uh, have a multi uh, uh, conference with uh, other people. But uh, thank you, Anita. Uh, I, I was really happy to to talk to you, and I hope that uh, those people today uh, just understand more what uh, an activist uh, uh, could be uh, in in the proper sense. Huh? Oh, so thank, thank you, you so much. I, I, it's really my pleasure, my honor. I am so grateful and I get to be number one. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So bye-bye um, everyone. So I'm going to, to, to just uh, continue my job and uh, take care, Anita, and uh, see, you, see you soon. Huh? Okay. Au revoir. Au revoir, ciao, ciao.